Hello all, welcome to Smart Classes. In today's class, we will see the current affairs of November 2020. And the first news is the NICE program, which is a deep technology startup support system at IIT Hyderabad. Basically, this program supports startups and students who are developing new technology in order to help people or in order to develop new industry or new product so what is the full form of nice it is nothing but nmdc innovation and incubation center so this nice program is basically a joint venture of nmdc and itic foundation so they will set up technology business incubators at iit hyderabad basically in these incubators uh, uh, using these incubators they will provide Techno technological support to startups, fellowship support to students who are developing new products and also financial support to the startups. So basically to support these startup, startups in, in Hyderabad or in India, technology business incubator has been put on, that is has been set up. So to support deep tech startups through incubation and fellowship support, basically this NICE program is a part of Startup India movement and this program is a five-year program and in this program, as a part of this program, 15 startups will be encouraged or financial support to 15 startups will be given during their incubation period, which is generally two years and six months extendable. So, startups will get financial support and technological support for their first two years and it is sometimes extendable to six months and also 15 fellowships to students who are planning to start their startups or uh, get a new product into the market will be encouraged by giving fellowships and as it is a five-year program we will have three three startups and uh, three fellowships sorry five fellowships every year that is five people will be encouraged every year and we'll have 10 crore by uh, and the funding will be given by nmdc which is at, which is estimated to be around 10 crore rupees and then the next news is safai mitra suraksha challenge basically this challenge is launched by hardeep singh puri who is the Minister of Housing and Urban Affairs Center. So, on November 19, 2020, which is known as World Toilet Day, this program was launched at, uh, by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Hardeep Singh Puri. Launched, uh, launched a challenge at New Delhi in a webinar across 243 cities. So, what is the part of this challenge? So, uh, the main goal of, th of this challenge is to mechanize all sewer and septic tank cleaning. Currently, there are many people who are cleaning uh, sewer and septic tanks manually, which is sometimes killing people who are, kill uh, who are cleaning or giving many diseases to the people who are cleaning. So to avoid it, all the cleaning of sewer and septic tank must be mechanized so the mechanization of civil and septic tank cleaning is the main aim and goal of this safai mitra suraksha challenge so uh, and, and they are planning to achieve this by 30th april 2021 so as you know the reason behind the challenge is the prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their rehabilitation act 2013 so to implement the to implement the changes made by this act this program has been launched may 2021 assessment of practice uh, participating cities and results declared on august 15 21 2021 basically the dates you need to remember is by 30th april all the sewer and septic tank cleaning must be mechanized and and the assessment of these cities, whether they have achieved mechanization or not, is tested in May 2021 and the results will be declared in August 2021. And then the next thing is Swachita Awards 2020, which was also conferred on the 
World Toilet Day, which is November 19, 2020. Basically, advisories by Central Public Health and Environmental Engineering Organization. So, this, the people are selected by this organization. Training module for sanitary workers and cleaning of sewer and septic tanks is being given. Document on equipment and workforce norms for managing waterborne sanitation in India is also published. Consultative document on land application of fecal sludge is also published on the World Toilet Day which is November 19, 2020. And an open forum event will, uh, has been conducted which says manhole to machine hole transformation. And then Swachita Awards 2020 for promoting safe sanitation in villages. This program is, is part of Swach Bharat Mission Grameen, Grameen segment of the Swach Bharat Mission. And the first place has been conferred to Siang City in Arunachal Pradesh. And Siddhi Pet and Peddapalli from Telangana are also in top 20 cities in Swachita Awards. And then Indian Railways has collaborated with Indian School of Business Hyderabad to improve operational efficiency using artificial intelligence and data analytics using digital tools such as artificial intelligence and data an analytics. So basically, ISP will analyze the data generated by railways. So the data can be generated in the form of data of the passenger, train operations, fleet, and asset-related data. So all this data will be analyzed by Indian School of Business and organized and processed using artificial intelligence and data analytics. After analysis, it will be used by Indian Railways in the passenger reservation system introduction of new new trains predictive asset maintenances office uh, many officers have been appointed in order to look after the operations taken over by indian school of business so chief technical officer and assistant chief technology officer to get trained at iits isp iam and triple ids on ai and data analytics so that they can manage the railway services using data analytics and AI. Data analytics and AI. So, Indian Railways and ISB has, have also studied an integrated coal fleet optimization model to increase network throughput and optimize free transportation over Indian Railways. Uttar Pradesh ranks Fifth in MSME employment generators during pandemic. RBI has presented a report which, which gives the ranking to states in generation of employment so that uh, if, the, if the employment is generated in their own state, then the migration will reduce. In order to take care of the migrant issues, employment generation by MSMEs in the states should in this in the states is necessary so telangana is also in the top 10 uttar pradesh ranks fifth and telangana is one of the top set sorry top 10 states un teams up with 100 scientists this team is known as halo team these scientists are have come together to build public confidence in COVID-19 vaccine. As you all know, many of the Indians or many of the people around the world are skeptic about COVID-19 vaccines. That is, they are afraid if they'll get some side effect or if, the body, if their body would take a COVID-19 in, in the right way or if they will get re really immune with COVID-19. So they have so many questions in their mind. So in order to give the answers to these questions, UN has built a team of 100 scientists to give the information to the public and increase the confidence of COVID-19 vaccines in the public. Basically, UN, United Nations and the Vaccine Conference Project have come together. This project has been launched in University of London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And there are 22 scientists from India among these 100 scientist group. And one of the scientists was also from NIMS Hyderabad. 
and then government of telangana has launched two mobile apps one of them says palle pragati panchayati secretary app and palle pragati inspection officer app basically these apps are to monitor and improve palle pragati works undertaken by gram panchayat basically this app is designed by state panchayat raj division so the palle pragati panchayat secretary app includes daily cleanliness programs conduct of gram sabha maintenance of records permissions and certificates issued revenue and expenditure of panchayats and palle pragati inspection officer app includes designed for uh, designed for the daily functioning of the concerned officers enable effective delivery of services to people to rank panchayats based on their services and it also monitors sanitation work cleaning of the government officers status of vaikuntha dhamams dumping yard details nursery works approval and certificates financial dealings etc so palle pragati is a program which is being launched to improve infrastructure and ensure complete development in villages and the next and the eighth news of this uh, month is arunachal pradesh records best sex ratio in india annual report from office of register and census commissioner has been released and this gives details about sex ratio literacy ratio and many other data and this report is known as vital statistics on india based on civil registration system 2018 and arunachal pradesh has the highest sex ratio at birth which is 1084 females for 1000 males and nagaland is the second highest position which is 965 mizoram in the third place 964 and kerala 963 karnataka 957 and 13 states 100% registration of birth 13 states have registered 100% registration of birth that is every student or every kid who is born in these 13 states have been registered or they have their date of birth registration certificates which includes telangana and level of registration is 81.3% in 2009 and now it's 89.3% in 2018 and the overall sex ratio of india was 906 in 2011 and now it is 899 in 2018 and the next news is telangana government's first right of vedika inaugurated by ksr to address farmers issue issues what is this right of vedika right of vedika is basically a place which is established or built in order to make the uh, make the farmers meet at a place and discuss about the issues going on uh, in the field of farming and the technology improvements in the farming and the rates of the uh, procurement of the uh, of various grains will be discussed at this raitu vedika at this raitu vedika platforms at kondakanda village jangao district this uh, raitu vedika was inaugurated by ksr at kondakanda village jangao district basically this addresses the issues of farmers by bringing them under one platform and help them attain higher status 22 lakh or 22 lakh per raitu vedika should be used the expenditure for uh, building this raitu vedika is 22 lakh out of which 12 lakh will be uh, will be paid by the agricultural department and 10 lakh by manrega funds and mission bagiratha will provide tap water to the two rooms and two toilets at raitu vedika because basically raitu vedika consists of two rooms and two toilets and then planning of planning to construct 2061 but 1580 have been already completed and then solar capacity addition falls 80% in quarter 2 of financial year 2021 that is between july to september 2021 basically this report was published by mercom communications india according to this report 435 megawatts 
uh, of uh, solar capacity solar power has been generated in 2020 but in 2020 2019 it was 2177 megawatts by september 30 2020 total solar installed capacity would be 37.4 gigawatts and the report says that india has solar project development pipeline of 44.7 gigawatts with another 34.6 gigawatts tender and pending auction at the end of third quarter 2020 basically mercom communications is nothing but uh, is basically a subsidiary of global clean energy communications and consulting firm mercom capital group and then MRA, MNRE, which is Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, proposes wind solar hybrid parks in state. So basically, these wind solar hybrid parks are there to address issues, issues faced by renewable energy products. States will prepare infra for wind power projects under plug and play model. Basically, these are the two tasks taken up by the states. Sites have been identified in seven states by NIW, which is National Institute of Wind Energy. And these seven states are Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Telangana, Gujarat, Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Capacity of each park must be between, must be around 500 megawatts ideally, but it can be less than 500 megawatts, but not less than 50 megawatts. And then wind plants will be established. Uh, um, till now we have 43 percent of the total installed renewable energy as wind plant which is around 89 gigawatts total power generation in india is 373 gigawatts out of this 62 percent is by the thermal plants and then 36 global cities selected by wef that is world economic forum for pioneering a new global policy roadmap for smart cities out of these 36 four are from india bengaluru faridabad indore hyderabad so basically five policies must be adopted by these 36 cities they are privacy protection better broadband services increased openness of city data accountability for cyber security better accessibility to digital city services for disabled and elderly so, these five policies were decided at G20 Global Smart Cities Alliance, with, uh, which will give procedures, laws and regulations to use and new technology respectively for these 36 cities. So, this G20 Global Smart Cities Alliance has been established in June 2019 at G20 Summit. So, these pioneer cities launched a global event World Premier Smart Cities event by Smart City Expo World Congress. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Please do subscribe and share.